Hello, this is Rory O'Connor. I'm the med rugby correspondent at Media House Ireland and a former player at UCD or FC. In this series of interviews, in conjunction with club sponsor Crow, we talk to past and present play players who shared their memories of the club and how it impacted their career and life on and off the field. In this interview, we catch up with John and Vinnie Hammond. Vinnie played and coached at UCD and is now a high performance analyst at the IRFU and a key part of Warren Gatlin's backroom team on this summer's Lions tour of South Africa, his second tour in a row with the Lions. Vinny's dad, John, became involved with the club during Vinny's time playing and is a familiar face to everyone at Belfield, having done sterling work as the club's administrator. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by the Hammonds, uh, Vinny and John, two stalwarts of, of UCD RFC. And uh, John, maybe I'll start with you to, you know, you've been, I think I've seen you described as the heart and soul of the club for the last decade or so. I don't know if that sits well on your, on your shoulders. You're, you're a humble man. man. But how did you become involved in, in college and, and what does the club mean to you? Yeah. Well, a little bit. I'm not too sure about the, the heart and soul because going back, uh, you know, I, I don't come from a rugby background, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. It was quite alien to me. There wasn't a, a whole lot of it around the parish of Fairview or the surrounding districts. Uh, kind of when I was growing up, uh, GA was a common denominator all over that place. And uh, the, uh, that part of the north side, uh, Hill 16, was where you ended up on a Sunday afternoon on the hill, regardless of, of who was playing there. It was just yeah. everybody went and everybody enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, then it was in Joey's in Fairview, which was kind of a hotbed at that time of GA. It's kind of changed now. Um, I played uh, under 15s hurling for Dublin uh, schools against Kilkenny um, in, a, in a Leinster final in Croke Park. And uh, you can imagine how, how that went, uh, I'm sure. Um, yeah, the guy I was marking scored 2-7. Uh, <laughs> and that was only in the first half. <laughs> so I, didn't, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I didn't re emerge for the second half, as they say. Anyway, that's a little bit of background. How I got involved in the rugby, I suppose when Vinnie and Brian, they went to St. Mary's and at Mines. And uh, then I went to rugby games where they were playing. And thereafter to mini rugby up in St. Mary's. Uh, then he was playing, first of all, then was coaching. So with Brian. And that was kind of the involvement that I had at that time. Um, and then I suppose when he went to uh, UCD, I followed him out there. First of all, as a, I suppose, as a, an interested um, parent spectator. Uh, then as the under 20s uh, bag man for a number of years. And more recently then as the administrator of the club. Uh, whether that's the heartbeat of the club, as you described earlier or not, I'm, I'm not too sure, but it was a very enjoyable uh, experience uh, from which I retired last year uh, and worked with some great people out in UCD and still go out there uh, quite regularly on, on Wednesday mornings for a cup of tea uh, uh, in the air, uh, cycle out. Anyway, um, so during the, back to the rugby and back to... This is uh, some answer. That was the question... <laughs> This, anyway, I'm going, I just want to finish up here now. So, uh, when Vin was the coach then, of the head coach of the under 20s, uh, and I was bagman, um, they won, or he won with them five trophies from five, and followed that the following year with, with four. So, I was very proud to be part of that setup. Uh, it was unique, and it was great for the club. I think it was... Um, James Meenan was president at that time and uh, meant a, a huge amount to everybody involved. And um, that really was kind of my involvement uh, right back and through and up to the present day. Vinny, you, you can't get rid of him. <laughs> I could have just headed off and got a coffee. Yeah. Um, but you're like, what, how, how did you, like, I, I played with you, Vinny, so apart from the, the that highlight of your uh, of, of your rugby career. How did you end up playing in college? And, and like, what? Wh how did you start there? And kind of, how did you enjoy playing first before you became a coach? Yeah, leaving school, I just went straight to. Uh, I, I I was hell bent on going to UCD because I, I really wanted to. Um, that was the only university I wanted to go to. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I was you know I was so keen to do it. So once I went there. There was a couple of Mary's guys ahead of me that had, that had been through um, UCD and uh, Rob Henson, I think at the time, was one of the players I would have, you know, in school, a couple of years ahead of me and said, like, I oh, know, you, you got to go here. Um, 
it's brilliant and uh yeah so myself and Stephen Gristin who's a, a really good friend both went and um, we were the only two from from Mary's to go that year um but the best part of it was actually the, the guys that you you meet that, that weren't in your own school so um yeah that was that was me I, I I'm a lot shorter than uh, my dad there in answering terms well <laughs> What do you mean? You say, yeah, I, think, I don't know if they paid for the premium version of Zoom here, so I don't know if we've got the time. <laughs> but so you you start off playing twenties, but you like some people come come through the club and, and are you know are, are in and out in a couple of years, but a lot of people stay on, like myself and yourself, who you retain a connection for, for for longer. What was it about playing twenties, going on playing playing more you know at adult level, and then becoming a coach? So how did that kind of process happen for you? I think for me it's just people like you know you just get you you, you get surrounded by people who you're either learning something off or uh, you enjoy their company or being around them and and there was just so many people like that in in the in the club and there still is um, and that would for me makes it an easy decision to stick around and and to be part of and um, there's nothing like i mean you could look and go oh you want to be part of whatever club once you've got people like that it, it's just easy um, and it's fun you know there's a lot of enjoyment there's a lot of uh, like as, as you know uh, as much as anyone there, there's a lot of off the pitch stuff that that keeps you in ucd that you know that really is like the stuff that you'll you'll kind of remember the rest of your life tours and um, you know the fun that happens after matches and and that kind of stuff away trips and all of those so yeah at what point, like we know about all the, the great players who've come through the, the UCD system and gone on to play for Ireland and play for the Lions and play for Leinster and, and, and other provinces as well. Um, but you forged a, a career in professional rugby out of, you know, out of your time as a, as a, as a young a kid playing, out of playing for UCD. At what point did you realise that staying in rugby was what you wanted to do and that there was kind of a, like an alternative path that you could go coach and then go into this analytics world? I know you went to Cardiff, I think, and, and, and studied there as well. So... You used your academic path to go there, but also I'm sure a lot of the rugby dollars that you picked up, you know, working with all these players that you see the coaches, um, helped you along that journey as well. Yeah, I think that like that's once you realise as a kid like that you're you're not going to be a professional rugby player if you if you still have passion for the game, um, you know like it, it, there's there's other ways to work in sports. I think um, you know there's 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 lots of different kind of avenues now more than ever. Um, but obviously being around in UCD you are with players who have gone on to make it you, you're, you're surrounded by um, coaches who've gone on to, to coach at higher levels and um, again it just makes things easy because you're surrounded by success and, and that just drives you and brings you along with it like so it's very hard to be ordinary um, in, in a group of people that are, are all achieving so much that you know I think everyone gets swept up by, by that tied John can you maybe talk to me a little bit about the um, the work that goes on in the background but but behind the scenes because we see the team play we see the, the, the really great players that UCD has but a lot of work and effort goes on behind the scenes to, to keep all that show on the road yeah I suppose a lot of the work that I had to do working in circuit as the administrator in the office was connected with the uh, with the with the teams the, the hospitality the transport uh, the availability of uh, people at the weekend when there would be a match, um, setting up the bowl, um, welcoming the teams to the hospitality side, uh, to a certain extent the financial aspects of that. So it came in kind of from all sides, and uh, which was a great way of getting to know everybody in the club. And then, you know, inevitably you'd be holding the hand of the president through his presidency, um, to make sure that he knew what he was doing and I knew what he was doing, uh, which was important too. So that was some of the stuff what we were doing um, as you know, week on a week to week basis. Um, and then through UCD itself, I suppose, it's the uh, arranging of pitches, it's the, um, it's the contacting the team uh, coaches that they know where they're where they're going and, uh, and where their match is and then there's also the the laundry aspect of it which is a uh, quite a big job to be honest but uh, again quite enjoyable um, so uh, that, that was a lot of the stuff yeah but it was great yeah it? I, 
God, I remember. I know that the Daffodil Day promotion is something that you were heavily involved in, and also the 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 tag rugby that was set up in the in the the, the university, which probably brought a lot of people to the club that wouldn't previously have had a connection, it didn't play full contact or anything like yeah. that. That's a very good point, Rory. Um, I'm very proud of both those. Uh, certainly, that for the day was an opportunity for the players to give something back into the club, and they did really, really well in, in so doing. A lot of the, our contracted players that we wouldn't see around the club for obvious reasons, they would all come back for a photo shoot to promote the day, and uh, it was very, very well attended every year, obviously up to last year. And well supported by uh, Bro, I have to say as well. Um, and uh, the uh, tag rugby, it struck me not long after being in UCD Rugby Club that it was kind of a little bit elitist. If you didn't play rugby, rugby, then there wasn't any kind of room for you. So we uh, set up the mixed tag rugby. It started off very, very slowly, but then picked up a lot of momentum. And the last year that we had it was um, 500 students on the Monday afternoon playing tag rugby and enjoying every bit of it. And also it became part of the uh, academic side of uh, sports and exercise science. And the lecturer over there, Amy Birmingham, was able to write it into one of her modules of which students got credit. So it was very, very successful and it will be going again. You mentioned pride. You must be uh, very proud of the man at the bottom of my screen there, Vinny, and, and you must get a great kick out of seeing him on TV alongside Andy Farrell or John. And, and yeah, I he's got to do. Yeah, You've got yeah. to be a proud dad on the sideline to yeah. watch on TV. Well, his, his mother racing across the room with her camera uh, to, and shouting at me to pause the picture. That's <laughs> that's the one I suppose kind of sticks in my, my mind uh, about that. Well, absolutely, yes. Um, there's no doubt about that, Rory. Um, uh, we're very proud of you know what he has achieved uh, to, to date. Um, it's unfortunate we had to get him out of bed early this morning uh, to, <laughs> to appear. But uh, having said that, I, I, I was used to that when it's his, his, uh, his years at home. But I'd like to um, yeah, endorse what you said. It's, it's a great opportunity for, for him. And uh, to reach the kind of pinnacles of the two Lions uh, tours, uh, that's terrific. And uh, yeah, we're, we're the, myself, Brian, and Maria are very proud of it. Can you, can you just give us a, a kind of a, a little bit of an insight into what you do? Because I think people will, will, you know, anyone who doesn't know you from the club, and most people would, but people who don't would recognise you from being in that coach's box in that high pressure environment. Because you sit, you know, you do sit. You've got a great, per, best seat in the house, even better than the press box, I think. Um, and, and also, like, just going on the lines this summer, and what it means to you, and also what it entails. Like, what is your day to day going to be on, on that? I know it's a very broad question, but just an idea of what you do, because it's a very interesting job, and I think people probably don't really understand the nuances of it. Yeah, I think it's probably twofold now. You're dealing with like the actual game um, and planning to a tactical plan towards an opposition and, and everything that goes into that from week to week and um, from, you know, individual preparation to individual planning and um, and then working obviously with our own players and our own coaches and trying to make sure that they have everything that they need. Like we're, you know, you don't want to oversell anything that that we do, so we, we try and just to be that extra set of eyes or that extra, um, you know, that extra voice that that maybe looks at something that isn't as obvious or that is sitting underneath the surface a little bit, um, and then in the data kind of analytics and that kind of side of things, again, that's probably you're trying to extract maybe one or two things from from hundreds of things. Um, there's so much data available to, to coaches and to, to well to everybody you know yourselves included in the media and it's it's actually trying to find out what matters so you know, that's part of my journey at the moment I'm in my final year again in UCD so hopefully um, graduate again in, in June of next year by, by June of next year but that journey is, is continuing and trying to find out you know what actually matters in 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 all of that. So, um, from a Lions perspective, it's interesting. The last tour there was myself, Rodri Bowen from Wales, and Mike Hughes from England. And uh, this time we've got Mark Kinnear from Wales and Gavin Vaughan from Scotland. And again, Rodri's there from from Wales. So so like you 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 go in with preconceived ideas of what way other teams operate. And the best thing about the Lions is well for me anyway is just letting your guard down and say right this is. This is how we or I do things normally, and um, 
and everybody shares and you just come back a better you come back a better analyst you come back a better rugby player I think it's the same for the coaches they come back as better coaches um, but it is that letting your guard down I think my dad said it to me the last time before we left about you know just be open and and uh, the more open that we were with each other over there the, the more everybody got out of it players and coaches staff backroom team everything um, so yeah day to day I, I don't think I'm going to be in the coaches box for this tour I think it's the same as the last one I'll be on the sideline which is it's even better and you do pinch yourself it's an absolute privilege like to 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 be that close up to some of the the best athletes in the world and um, but at the same time, you don't lose the fact that you're just doing your job and it's it's, it's yeah. working. At the end of the day, you close your laptop and then you go home and you're in a hotel room and then you go to bed. Um, after you don't day. really go to bed, though, do you? Like, you have to stay up all night <laughs> yeah, cutting, all the, cutting no, all the footage together for the coaches. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's come a long way, Rory. Like, there's not the same amount of um, manual labour going in. Like, we try and automate as much as we can. Um, we we try and outsource the, the really heavy lifting stuff back to uh, an office in, in in Europe and they can do that kind of stuff and then we, it gives us the opportunity probably to look a little bit more at the structural stuff or the bit that's not as potentially not as obvious. I'll finish up there lads but John could maybe the last year has been a terrible and like difficult for everyone and, and I guess we're all looking forward to getting back to the bowl and, and, and hopefully you know in a couple of months time reconnecting with the club and, and the kind of things that we've missed through the whole year how much have you missed being able to just be in, yeah, I know you've retired from your official role but I'm sure you still would have loved to get down for a few not games retired. he's 100% not retired he's on the <laughs> calls every day Daffodil Day 2022 and 2023 is already planned right? yeah, it, is actually, yeah. it actually is yeah. um, just to go back there for a minute I'm delighted to hear that the PhD is coming to an end next year <laughs> uh, so we look forward to that Vincent yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'd be happy to get back. I, what I what I said to the club was, I said, look, on match days I'll be around to do whatever needs to be done, and then maybe not necessarily the hospitality end, but but, but the bowl and and all that connects with it. And as uh, you just said, that until day uh, is kind of red circle for us as well, um, and I keep that going. I. <laughs> Possibly tag initially, just to get it up and I know, yeah, get, just to get it, just to get it up and running, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's hard to fully extract uh, from it. But I suppose there isn't the overall uh, waking up in the morning and, and kind of thinking uh, like I have this amount to do today for the club to have that right by the evening. So that bit is taken away. So it's more general kind of stuff in my head that uh, I know is coming up and plenty of time to and plenty you, of time to ride my bike. You had all the football matches, the Gaelic football match, the, the ball, the, the oh, fair yeah. so for somebody who's retired it's a lot. Well, oh yeah, the, the, well that's the other part of it too, the visiting team to use the bowl um, uh, I kind of mind them as well and uh, any other events that would be in the bowl they kind of ask me about look after it so yeah yeah I guess remind so it doesn't sound like you're very retired but it sounds like you're looking forward to getting back to UCD anyway yeah I am I, I actually uh, um, it, it would be good um, as you probably know I took a COVID hit uh, way back at the start of the year where, which took a while to disappear but I'm so happy that it has done and that I can do these things yeah well lads thanks very much for your time this morning I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the, the chat and um, Vinny best of luck in South Africa and um, we hope it goes well for everyone and, and for, for uh, Andrew Porter as well. Or, uh, he's flying the flag for UCD over there on the pitch. Brilliant. And John, best of luck. In, in, like, it doesn't sound like much of a retirement, but best of luck with everything. And thanks for uh, for everything you do for the club. Yeah, not at all. And a lot of good people out there that uh, I wouldn't want to be too far away from for too long.